a little of code review tips. I am again, I review a lot of codes. So I'm pretty passionate about it. So we're gonna take a little bit of a deep dive on code review. Uh, it'll be short, I promise. Um, so add more context than you think you need. This is super important. You've spent like hours on some piece of code and you think you know everything about it and it's super obvious, but it isn't to everyone else. So use markdown, link previous work, include graphs, data, benchmarks. Um, you want your PR to be so easy to merge that no one will walk by it. If it's obscure and difficult, people are much less likely. Um, make sure it's just mergeable. Make sure your tests are passing. A lot of people put up PRs that are failing static checks, that are failing builds. Uh, this one's easy. Make sure your builds are passing. Uh, and this is a big one. Yeah, be empathetic. Um, clearly communicate. Err on the side of positivity. You know, on online communication, we don't have body language. We don't have facial expressions. We don't have eye contact. All of that's lost online. Um, so be very clear and intentional with your feedback. That's super important. Especially in the Airflow community, we have a bunch of first-time contributors. It's uh, it's especially important that we give those contributors a good experience when they when they join Airflow. And then lastly, it's easy to point out an issue, but you know it's even better to point out a solution. Um, GitHub is a great feature. You can include actual committable code in your uh, comments. This is awesome. And return to the PR frequently when you give feedback. Uh, make sure you don't leave people hanging. Okay, so initiatives. So you're trying to find more code to write. This one um, often of the recipe, do something foo to every code bar. Um, so small initiatives, there's often lots of those ongoing in Airflow. Uh, I took part in an initiative early on in the Google provider package. Um, this was updating example DAGs uh, for all of their uh, operators. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, so this got me exposed to a different code base that I wouldn't have otherwise. Um, I broadened my experience, I got my commits up. Um, this was super important. And there's tons of these going on all over the place. And once you've been involved in a few, it starts uh, doing your own initiatives. This can be like adding a new linting option, um, refactoring code across several packages. Um, as a personal example, back to DAGs and docs, uh, myself and the open source team had an initiative where we made sure all of our AWS operators had example DAGs and docs. Um, so again, we did this thing food, all code bar. We got a lot of people involved. We got a lot of commits. It was, it was really great. Um, Vincent has a talk later today on some of the outcomes of that. We have system tests running on all those example DAGs, and uh, it's pretty cool. And be sure to publishize these uh, initiatives. Get people involved. OK, so you have some initiatives under your belt. You've done a lot of code. You're doing a lot of reviewing. Now we're getting a little bigger. Um, proposing and leading a large initiative is, uh, is super helpful here, AIPs, Airflow Improvement Proposals. Uh, it shows you're capable of being a leader in the community. It also gets you deeply collaborating, like deeply collaborating with others because you're talking about big architectural changes. You're getting feedback from people. You're discussing with other community members. Uh, it gets you just learning the AIP process, how to write a doc, how to get it reviewed, how to iterate, discuss, how voting works. Um, gets you active on the dev email list. Uh, that's super important. We talked about that earlier. For me personally, I wrote AIP 51. Uh, it's on executor decoupling. I did a talk earlier today about that. Uh, you can catch the video online once this is up on YouTube. Um, but that's a, it's a longer story that I won't get into here. Um, after getting that approved, I created a project board. Uh, GitHub is a really cool feature, make like Kanban style boards. Um, so I put all of the tasks in there, posted it on the dev list and got much more community involvement than I expected. That was so great. Again, I didn't write all that code. I reviewed a bunch of that code. I iterated with the community to get that code written. Um, it was a great experience. Uh, next up, a mentor. Oh, this one's huge. A mentor is a fantastic resource. Uh, it's really nice to have someone who's already a committer PMC member. That way they're calibrated to the bar. Um, it's not a strong requirement, but I think it's super helpful. Um, so yeah, they're invaluable. They can make sure you stay on the same track. Uh, they're giving you an outside unbiased perspective, hopefully, or at least a perspective that's different from yours. Uh, for me, Elad was my mentor. He was an invaluable uh, resource. He might be in the audience here somewhere. Um, yeah, I met periodically with Elad while I was uh, trying to become a committer. That was uh, super helpful for me. Sometimes you have blind spots and you don't know what you're missing. Um, that was awesome. A shameless plug for myself. If anyone uh, feels like they need some feedback, reach out if I have the capacity and time. Happy to give you some feedback. Uh, groups and teams. Yeah, Airflow has a couple of big groups you can join. The triage team is the first one. Uh, they get more privileges to modify uh, code on GitHub. 
um, the aid in the issue uh, or aid in issue triaging and issue management. Um, we have the security team. This team gets more exposure to the security issues in Airflow. Uh, I think it's mostly committers and PMC members on that team, but I don't think it's a hard requirement. Personally, I joined the triage team when I uh, was close to becoming a committer. This was near the end. I think it was just one of the best things I did. It gave me, you know, I spent two or three months just deeply engaged in the community, spending time triaging issues, reviewing PRs, assigning people, unassigning people. Um, I started a practice of commenting when I think something should be merged, just trying to pretend I was a committer for as long as I could. Um, this, I think, was maybe one of the most beneficial things. Um, so just pop on the dev list, send out an email, say that you're interested. You can get yourself uh, on one of those teams. Okay, I have a basket of things that didn't fit other slides. So we're going to have a bit of a lightning round. Uh, I promise it'll be quick. So be consistently active. I think this is when I, I asked a few people, I asked a few committers what uh, what their top tips was. And this was the, the top one that I heard from the most people. Uh, it's totally fine to be a casual contributor. Again, you don't need to be spending eight hours a day on this. Uh, it doesn't mean you should never take breaks or work on other projects. Um, but also the community wants to see you're dedicated to the project. Committer status is for life. It can't be revoked. I mean, you can give it up and under extreme cases it can be revoked. But um, so it's important to make sure that people are invested in the community. Um, so this one is huge. All the people I've seen recently get committer status. Um, you just see them everywhere. You just see them consistently invested across all facets of the community. Uh, so that's a hugely important one. Uh, manage your expectations. This one was, this one was personally hard for me. Uh, you can get to a point where you're like, gosh, what else could I possibly do? I think I've been doing everything and I think I've been doing it for so long. What am I missing? Uh, so two things are important here. One is that there is no just checklist that once you do it, you're just automatically a committer. The community is much more of a living, breathing, fluid thing. Um, so make sure to check yourself. And then two, check in with your mentor. Again, this is where they come in. They can give you that unbiased feedback. They can tell you what you're missing, what your blind spots are. Um, it's hugely important. Uh, release management, that becomes more important as you move up committer and PMC. Um, so start testing releases. This is another common piece of feedback I got when I talked to other committers. Um, it's maybe release management is the not the most glamorous side of project management. A lot of people want to be writing code, um, but this is hugely important. So vote on releases, test releases. It gets you on the dev list. It gets you involved with other people. It gets you testing parts of the code that maybe you didn't write. Um, it's a good habit to get into. Be vocal with your opinions. Be opinionated. Uh, Apache is a flat structure. All voices are important. It doesn't matter how long you've been a committer. Your vote counts just as much as another committer. It doesn't matter how long you've been a contributor. The same vote mounts. The same PMC to PMC, of course. Um, so again, get on that dev list. Get on discussions. Get on Slack. Um, be vocal. And then community over code. I keep hammering this point home. This is kind of the subtext of this whole talk. Um, don't just sit in a corner and code. It's helpful. We need code. Um, we need fully rounded folks in the community as well, though. A healthy, thriving community will have no problem producing code, um, but the reverse is not always true, at least not in my experience. And with that, that's all the tips I have for you. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs>